All right, hi everybody. Uh, my talk is about making okay videos. Um, I'll quickly introduce myself. I'm a freelance iOS developer. Uh, I've been making iOS apps for 11 years now, I think. I started off, start off as a junior developer at Pinch, uh, not right here, but at this company. Uh, and I also make games, but ask me later, I'll show you something. Um, so this is Pim. You might have seen some tweets of this. Uh, I had a bunch of stuff uh, I just found out uh, or have known for a while and people appreciate it. Uh, thanks for the retweets, by the way. Um, but this is my first time presenting for people I actually don't know. So if you already can't tell, I'm very nervous. So thanks a lot. <laughs> so my talk is about OK Video. Um, this might be embarrassing, show of hands, who know of my app, OK Video? Okay, it's quite, not too bad, not too bad, could be better. But it's been in the App Store for two years. I made it with my friend Tom, you see here. Uh, if you want to know more about my app, go to okvideo.app. Um, it all started with, um, with me missing Vine, and the guy I made it with, Tom, he missed Vine a lot. Uh, it, it died at the end of 2016 or beginning of 2017. And I, I'm guessing you all know what Vine is, right? Yeah, okay. Um, we wanted to make an app where you can quickly create videos um, without any limitation, full screen, uh, no six second limitation. limitation. And uh, he's gonna introduce it for me. What the heck is OK Video? It's an app, it's this one, see? Full frame zoomable video sequences? <laughs> It's true. Finally, I can make movies about my feet. <laughs> See? Hey, I can make movies. <laughs> hey, I can make movies. <laughs> and you can make those puppies as long as you want them to be. Just save it to your camera roll and share it wherever you want. And you may need to sit down for this one. This video was made with OK Video. <laughs> <laughs> I love this guy. Uh, so, what was the idea? <coughs> Like recording Vine style. And Vine style recording means whenever you hold the finger on the screen, you are recording, but whenever you let go, you're not recording. You can make another clip by holding the screen again. And whenever you're done, it makes it like a composition of all the clips you've recorded into one long video, uh, but with little to no effort. And whenever you're done, you just save it to your camera roll or present it with a share sheet and send it wherever, just do whatever. Like, how hard could it be, I thought. So this is uh, the first prototype. Um, uh, Emoji-based uh, development, emoji-driven development uh, I was using. Um, I think this button over here was uh, flipping the camera to your uh, front-facing camera. Uh, you can preview it. This was a magic thing that pops up a menu. You can delete the last clip and when you tap OK, because it's called OK Video, you're sharing the video right away. Um, I, eventually, I ran into a friend who said, let's not do emoji, and he probably designed it, and it looks way better. Uh, so the first challenge um, I came into was actually the asynchronous starting and stopping of recording. What I found out is when you use AV movie file output, that's a, totally the easiest way to record video of any kind, um, the recording is not synchronous. That means that whenever you start recording, it doesn't start recording right away. It'll, rec it'll do some stuff, prepare a file, uh, do whatever, and then it'll start recording maybe a few hundred milliseconds later. Um, but it does have some delicate calls, so it uses a delicate pattern to let you know whenever recording has started or whenever it has stopped, and also when something has gone wrong. Um, but what if the recording should stop um, while, uh, what did I say? What if recording should stop when recording has started? Okay, that doesn't make any sense. Very, very quickly. Yeah. Hello, bro. There you go. Uh, so, <laughs> I, I think what I, what I wanted to say here, what if recording should stop before the recording has actually started? So, in a, the time it took for the AV movie file output to actually start recording, you already said, no, I'm done, just don't need to do anything. So, that's, that's a weird edge case, right? Uh, the same goes for what if the screen is tapped uh, very rapidly. Well, 
I'm going to present this in a, an animation and just bear with me for a second. Maybe it works out, maybe it doesn't. Uh, I'm going to show you what could happen in this case. Isn't this awesome? So this is, whenever you have the finger on the screen, it records and after a while it will actually start recording. Whenever you let it go, after a while it will stop recording and the same goes for the next clip. But it could be that whenever you stop recording over here and wanted to record again, this, this guy over here, the, the actual recording part, was still stopping recording. And then you have like a mismatch between states. Uh, I solved that quite, quite easily actually. I used two properties. Uh, one is called shoot record, and that is actually, it's, it's saying whenever, uh, uh, if the finger is actually on the screen, and the other one is, is recording, and that means, are we actually recording? So whenever I have the finger on the screen, uh, it says shoot record to true, and when it's off the screen, it says to false, and I get a delicate callback from the recorder whenever it starts and stops. So whenever I get the delicate callback that it has started, I said to is record, and whenever it stops, I said it's recording to false. And I used uh, these two um, properties to check what should happen. So whenever I get the delicate callback from the recorder that it has started, I check, hey, do I need to still uh, keep recording? Um, and then if it doesn't, I tell it to stop right away. And the same thing happens when I've ended, when the recording has ended. Okay, I, I say, um, is recording set to false? And I check, should I record again? Is the finger already on the screen again? And I tell it right away to start recording. And I try to simulate that with a very nice animation. So I start recording, and after I stop recording right away. So after a while, uh, the recording has started, and I check, should the recording start again? No, so stop right away. The recording stopped, I get a delicate callback, and it says, well, you still need to stop, so I don't do anything. And the other edge case is, let me just go back. Can I go back? Yeah. Let's wait for the second, second part. So whenever I quickly tap and quickly stop. And then over here, uh, it, it figured out, hey, I actually need to stop, uh, start. So it asked me, is my finger on the screen? Yeah, it is. So I'll just happily continue recording. And over here, I tell it to stop. And after a while, it actually stopped. Does this make sense? If there's any question at this point, just raise your hand, just ask me. Because, yeah. Is this your final solution? Because this still looks like <laughs> the path what the user is doing. Okay, this is my, fi this is my final solution. The, um, for my first prototype, I used AV movie file output because it was very easy. But um, eventually I'm using something else and I'm gonna go into that a little later. Um, but this is, this is a very fundamental thing I figured out with asynchronous stuff when you have to wait for something to start and when the state isn't um, complete, logical, you finish it, whatever. So the se second challenge is going down another level um, because AV movie file output wasn't working for me. It was horrible. So I need to go one level deeper and anybody recognizes this little guy? Yeah. It's the best game. Check it out. Down well. Uh, but things get, things get really tricky uh, when you go a level deeper. So you have two streams of data. One for video and one for audio. Both have like a different timing and different intervals. The video comes in at every frame. So you get a, you get a delicate callback with data and it's called a, sam a sample buffer you get. And the sample buffer contains one frame of video but the audio is very unpredictable. You get audio like you don't know how long the audio is, when you're going to get it, and at what time actually the audio was recorded you're going to get. So what do I use for that? I use AV capture data output, and that gives me either video, video or audio, and you uh, set the delicate call to that, and you get the data. And then with the, with the help of some classes, you turn that into something you add to AV Asset Writer, and that is actually going to write the whole video data into a file. So there's this stream happening. I was like, what do I need to do with the stream? No idea. Finally, I found out that it's, it's just some stream of water happening and you just put a glass on it, you capture data you want, you take your glass out and you have 
some data. And while you're filling your glass, you're actually writing it. It doesn't really work this analogy. You're writing it off to somewhere. Uh, what you need to know do, though about this is doesn't, it's not actually a stream of data. It's a, a pool of buffers that's being reused, uh, just like uh, a table view that reuses their own cells. It's, um, it's like a buffer of, I think, 20 objects or so that are being reused and refilled with data so you don't um, delete data uh, from, the, from memory and so you reuse all the data. Uh, whenever you try to hold on to some buffers for a while, stuff will go wrong. So take note of that. So what has actually happened with, um, happening with this stuff is when video and audio is getting in um, unsynchronized, you might end up with having video that started earlier uh, and then after that, you're going to get, uh, you might have audio in there. And um, what I mean by that is when video comes in, it might have a different timestamp than the next buffer of audio that comes in. So whenever you record the video and audio directly to a file, you're going to have a problem where after like the first frame or so, the audio starts. But it could also be that you get audio before the video and you, have, you end up with a black frame and then audio starts. You don't have any video and then video starts and then the audio might cut in later. Uh, how I solve that is but by noting when the first sample of audio starts uh, and when the sample of audio ends. Usually you have more f uh, video data than audio data. Um, and then note that time and then cut the video at that exact time so you have both video and audio at the same time. Illustrated here. Uh, but then you'll have, you end up with half a frame of video. So if you cut the video at frame boundaries, that's what I call them, uh, I usually record with 30 frames a second. So if you uh, round down the time of the video to 30 frames a second, you end up with a sample of, in this case, four frames and three and a half samples of audio. Uh, the third challenge for me was putting it all together. So you have a lot of videos, you have a lot of clips you recorded and now you want to share that uh, with somebody and you need to put them in sequence. Um, also, there's this weird problem when you have audio files directly uh, next to each other, you're gonna hear either a pop or a click and it means that, um, I'll, I'll tell, tell you later. Don't worry about it, don't worry about it. Um, so, with, I'm using AV composition for that. And AV composition basically is a composition just like uh, iMovie. Uh, it allows you to put different assets after one another and um, it handles audio and video separately. So you need to add the video data into a specific track and the audio data in a specific track. And then you can make that composition uh, into an actual file that you can share. So the problem with audio is audio actually ha happens in waves. So there's a waveform of audio, and if those waveforms don't line up very neatly, like, like here, you're gonna hear like a very, very nasty, like a click, a tick. Some, some of you might have heard it when you stop audio or when something goes wrong, it, the audio just ticks. Um, and that's bad, you don't want that. Um, the way to solve that is to crossfade the, this part of the audio into the next, and this part of the audio um, crossfaded back, so they neatly like line up, and you don't have what's uh, pictured here. And this is handled by the composition. Or? Yeah, you handle that in the composition, and I'll I'll show you. It's just an option. Send this composition. No, you need to do that manually. Ah, okay. Yeah, and that's that was very fun. The 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 hardest problem for me was working with milliseconds of data, rounding them up, rounding them out, and make sure that it all happens. And this is very long text of code. No idea what happens. And then you make a recording. Like I have so many recordings of my desk over my, my face, and then I capture it, and then I export it, and I airdrop it to my um, Mac, and then I check it, and it still clicks, and then I'm back to the drawing board again. It's so it's like a low pass filter, or what? Uh, not even. I'll show you. Uh, so this was me. Yeah, I'll show you. Uh, so this was me. I don't want any of those clicks. Uh, so I need to crossfade the audio. 
Um, Crossfading basically is um, slightly overlapping the audio and then uh, making sure at the start the audio is faded in and at the end the audio is faded out. So like you just crossfade. Um, so I made a very nice illustration to show what's actually happening. So imagine for a second that you have three specific clips. You have the video data and you have the audio data. What I need to do to crossfade is actually make a second audio track. Um, and then have um, all the, like, how do you call it again? Uh, the even and odd tracks, I, I put them next to each other. What's the word for that? Channel. Sorry? Channel? No, no. Even and odd. Even and odd, there you go. Yeah, thank you. Uh, English is not my first language. Uh, so, <laughs> so then I um, make sure the audio channels um, bleed into each other. What I actually have prepared before this is the video itself is actually a little longer, um, but I'm, I've cut them at half the duration of the crossfade. So I just cut the video over here, but I let the audio continue itself. And then I've added a very nice crossfade. So what happens over here, at this specific point, the audio gradually uh, turns down, and at this specific point, the audio gradually turns up. And if this all works swimmingly, then you have no clicks, the audio would crossfade very nicely. And um, you need to do this for about 10 milliseconds. It's a very short time, uh, but if you have like at least 10 milliseconds of crossfade, then you will hear no clicks at all. So basically you have down the volume in here and up the volume in there? Yeah. Yeah. Is, it, is 10 milliseconds always just enough? Is it like luck or is it like most of the time it's enough? To so a very good friend of mine who's a good audio engineer, I just asked him, he said 10 milliseconds and I'm like, I believe you. And that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but for me, uh, it, it ended up to be 16.6666 milliseconds mm -hmm. because it's that's uh, amounts to half a frame because I'm using 30 frames a second. Uh, that's 33.3333 seconds, and it's a half a frame of 16. So what I actually do is, if this if this video were to be like two frames of video, you have one frame here, one frame here, the crossfade would be actually like half a frame. So I will bleed a quarter frame into the next video and a quarter frame into the previous video. And no, it works. Okay. So your video is also easily Your video is also slightly overlapped for the... Yeah, yeah. But uh, the way the composition works is you, you tell it um, what... Um, what's it again? You can tell it what time you need to set it in the composition. So there's this, um, there's this range, yeah, there's a time range. You say, take this range of this specific video, put that in the composition at this specific point. So in the composition, I tell, use this specific range of the video, start it off at the start, but then I say the audio, put a little longer range, put that in the first audio track, and then start a little earlier with this audio track, and a, a, there's a, usual, um, a larger range for audio than I use for video. That means when the user uh, removes his finger, you need to collect audio still. Yeah. So that the audio is here. Yeah, that's true. And um, what I use for that is I use a small trick where I actually capture um, data before the user is recorded. I keep around me a very small pool of buffers I get in. And whenever I start recording, I, st I firstly record those buffers into the file. And whenever the user has stopped recording, I'll make sure we have enough data um, to actually um, use this, this stuff. When the user has tapped very slowly, I make sure we have at least two frames of video. And when we have that, we can actually do this. Um, so when you tap really quickly, it could be that you're ending up with less recordings than you actually tapped, but you won't find out because you're tapping really quickly and nobody's counting that. So that works for me anyway. Does it make sense? Yeah. Okay. So this is an actual, okay, I promise you I won't show any code, but this isn't really code. This is an actual comment I made for, just for myself to illustrate what is actually happening. Um, because I am rounding to what I call frame boundaries. So this is one thirtieth of a frame, but I made up half a frame boundaries. 
So I use, uh, use actual um, uh, video is cut up in two frames and audio is also cut up in two frames. And then um, the overlap, I made that a little bigger just to make sure nothing weird happens. Sometimes the timing could be a little bit off. Maybe surrounding error, I haven't found that out. Um, so I have more audio overlap than actually uh, is needed. And then I fade in for, uh, that's half a frame, but should be quarter. For, no, that's half a frame, that's true. So whenever you look here, you see that this track and this track overlap uh, exactly at the, the fade point and the video stops here and this video starts here and it all works. It just works. So how hard could it be? Well, it turns out it was pretty hard. That was it, any questions? So um, when you start <laughs> recording, before the user even taps the screen, then the first question that pops up in your mind is like, how is battery usage? Um, so I don't actually record to disk. I record to a very small uh, array in memory. And what basically that is doing is just retaining a pointer for a little bit longer than it should be retained. And there's, there's no implications of performance whatsoever because the pool is happening. So like there's constantly there is a buffer filled with video data. I'm just retaining it for a little while and that's it. Yeah. And then you write to the file as you're recording? Yeah, I only, only actually write to a file when the user is holding the screen and a little after the user has released the screen. So in real time you're writing to the file in real time? Always writing in real time, yeah. Why? Well, did you think about doing that later, asynchronously in the background? Oh, it is. Okay, it's not happening on the main thread, of course. Uh, because of memory? Uh, because you'll block your main thread whenever that happens. I'm, I make sure I have on my own um, not concurrent a serial thread that actually handles the writing to the data. Um, and I use that to make sure it all happens like synchronously. Um, but, yeah, what's your question again exactly? No, this is, uh, this is for me at least answering the question. Okay. <laughs> well, you're welcome. So writing to the uh, file is not too slow, that if you have a couple of things after each other, that the first uh, part that you recorded was still writing the file maybe? Yeah. The trick I did here was to actually prepare the writer uh, before I start recording. So whenever the, the app starts, uh, I already prepare a writer, it has, um, it has I, I hope it has made a file, and whenever I start recording, it starts writing right away. And whenever I stop recording, I finish that file and start another writer as soon as possible, so the next time recording starts faster. And I think I'm taking some shortcuts that AV movie file output isn't able to do because AV movie file output is very easy and it just lets you do whatever. And here it's very strict and, um, yeah, it makes it better for me, though. Now, are you writing in, in, in serial, like waiting for the first one to finish and then continue with the next one to write? Then yeah. you never have that problem, right? I am writing in serial, that's true, yeah. Any more questions? Oh, that's good for me. Thank you. Cool.